Welcome to Love Your Rabbit. I'm Jana, and today we are going to get into the bonding process, starting with introductions. Now, before I go any further, if you haven't already done so, please click the subscribe button. Give this video a like. That lets me know you want to see more awesome videos that are credible about best care practices for your pet rabbit. Now, one thing to remember about bonding is a gentle process might seem like it takes a little longer, but stopping and waiting for an injury to heal will actually stop the bonding process altogether and you'll have to wait for healing totally and then start again. So the truth is when you try to take shortcuts or force two animals together without doing the bonding process correctly, it's going to take you a lot more time. Not only that, you're going to cause unnecessary suffering and stress to both rabbits. So let's get into today's topic of introductions in the actual bonding process. Now the introduction phase can go a few ways. It could be love at first sight and if you have that scenario it doesn't mean that once you introduce these two rabbits you can just stick them in the same primary enclosure together. They still need to be observed at least for a couple days and so my suggestion is you would then put a love at first sight pair which is typically going to be a doe and a buck. That's not always true, but a neutered buck and a spayed doe are, are typically the best partners. And they're, they're the, you see a lot that there's a love at first sight situation when you have those two rabbits. My suggestion is you don't put them in one of the other's primary enclosure after that. You make a new primary enclosure, maybe put them beside your bed in the bedroom the first night so that you can observe if there or hear if any fighting breaks out. But that is a great situation if you have a love at first sight situation. You might also have a situation where they're they kind of like each other, it looks like they're getting along okay or they're indifferent and that might require a little bit longer introduction, might take you a couple days for introductions to occur or it might take longer, it just depends. The other scenario that you might have is they are fighting right out of the gate and that's going to require a proper introduction period where you use gates and you might start out with 15 minutes contact and work up, you know, with gates in between them and work up to a period of time where you can leave them for hours or a day you know, while you're doing work around the house or on the weekends when you're home, wherever you have time to do a bonding session. Whether you're bonding two rabbits or three or more, some of the basic concepts will apply and some of them won't depending on your rabbit's personality, whether or not he or she has been abused in the past or has health problems, whether or not he or she has ever had a bonded partner before. There are a lot of factors that go into bonding and if you've watched my other bonding videos in this bonding series, you'll know that there are certain things you need to do before the bonding process ever starts. One of the things I like to have on hand are pet gates. Now I am working with tinier rabbits now, but I have bonded giant breeds all the way up to 17, 18 pounds. Having pet gates that the rabbit cannot easily jump over or doesn't know he or she can jump over is a must when, during the bonding process. Remember, if you're using a bathtub or you have slick floors, you want to cover those services. A rabbit sliding around has a fragile spine, fragile bones, and can easily break a spine or splay his legs, which leads to broken hips and all kinds of injuries that could include a fatality for your rabbit. And you don't want that to happen. Always with bonding, the safety of the rabbit comes first. So the introduction phase, again, if you've gone to a shelter or you've taken your rabbit into a rabbit caretaker or someone who's rehoming their rabbit and you've introduced them through a process on their end, then you may get around some of these steps. But before you put them in the same enclosure together, you want to introduce them through some kind of pet gating. Let them get familiar with one another. Allowing the rabbits to become familiar with one another with a, a gate or pet fencing between them it allows them to get used to the way each other smells, the scents they have, and all this can be done without fighting. And so that's what we want to prevent here, especially in this early introduction phase, this phase one of getting your rabbits in the same enclosure. So phase one of bonding for me is always, always introductions. And as I've said before, proper introductions is for your rabbit's safety and to you want to avoid you want to avoid 
excessive fighting as much as possible. You never want to get into a situation where the rabbits are biting each other and drawing blood. Don't even let it get to that point ever. And and no no rabbit should be allowed to get into what's called a rabbit tornado. And I, I'm not going to put a video of a rabbit tornado. You can imagine two rabbits chasing each other around and around. I do not allow that to occur here. So we have some steps that we can do to prevent that from happening. And so once you've let them smell each other and kind of get used to each other through the pet gates and the fencing that you have between them, there might be some, some, they might try to nip each other through the gates or lunge at each other through the gates, you know, let that part settle down unless they're really all out fighting. And then you want to separate them because fighting rabbits, even if they're fighting through pet fencing, they will remember that. And you want to avoid letting fights get so far that they build up a memory of animosity. One of the realities of bonded rabbits, whether it's a pair or a trio or more, is sometimes a rabbit isn't feeling well or something is going on and rabbits get into a tiff. Even bonded rabbits fight. So I'm going to leave a link in the description box. That article is called When Bonded Rabbits Fight. So if you have two bonded rabbits that you need to separate and for a while until things calm down, you can easily rebond them. I have some tips and tricks in there that make that a lot faster and easier. So back to the introductions. You might have them a pet fence between them for the introduction phase for you know, 10 to 15 minutes at a time or an hour at a time, depending on the rabbit and whether or not it's causing them excessive stress or, or whether or not they're just constantly fighting through the gate. Again, if that's the case, you want to separate them and try again later. But just if they're, if they are fighting and it's causing excessive stress, their breathing stays up and it's just very, very stressful for them. Just try five or 10 minutes at a time and just let them get used to each other. Over a week or two or or this introduction phase, this phase one could take three or four months. I've had that happen before with a rabbit that was abused in her past, which uh, took a total of eight months, seven or eight months, somewhere in there to get two of these rabbits together, simply because the doe, the female rabbit, had had an abusive past. So in a situation like that, your the introduction phase is going to be a lot longer, but some rabbits do okay together right from the introduction phase. So you can start putting them in the same area together after a couple days or even even after a day of having them near each other. Another trick that we use is putting two rabbits that are doing okay in the introduction phase. If they there's no excessive fighting and they're not trying to lunge at each other constantly through the pet fencing, Put their primary enclosures near one another so that they can have constant contact through the bars while you're sleeping, while you're at work, while you're doing other chores. And because because they are having that constant contact, the bonding process will go much faster for you because they're already going to be used to living near one another. The thing to avoid in the introduction phase and also putting them in the same primary enclosure is don't ever put one rabbit in another one's territory and just leave them there. There's going to be a fight. You're going to wind up with a high vet bill and a suffering rabbit. And rabbits will fight to the death over some things like mating and territory. So don't think that these sweet little animals can just be tossed in together and that there won't be a problem because oftentimes there is a big problem. So once you have them introduced through the pet gate and you feel comfortable, sit down with them in the enclosure that you put them in and get the two rabbits together and use a dustpan. I I like to use a dustpan and gently practice separating them so that if something beyond a a nip, you know, breaks out, if they really look like they're going to start fighting, put the very gently so that you don't get their paw caught between the floor and the dustpan Um, very gently put that as a divider between them that just lets them know when they get close to that fighting behavior that that that's not going to be tolerated that's not what we're doing here and you can even take one of the rabbits and remove it away from that rabbit move it a foot away or two feet away so that 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 animosity kind of calms down a little bit now in some of these clips I have a trio that I've been working on and it's the same concept only with a trio my method is you do the same thing with introductions that you would with two rabbits only you separate the bonded pair if you have a bonded pair already and you're you're introducing a third rabbit into it that can be a little bit trickier than just having three rabbits that don't know each other it just again depends on the history of the rabbit their health what their experiences with other animals have been in the past, if other animals have attacked them a lot or somebody has carelessly or irresponsible 
irresponsibly had two rabbits together that didn't belong together in the same cage and they had to fight for their food. That's a horrible situation and it causes a lot of bad history for the rabbit you're trying to bond. So barring any abusive past or health problems, bringing a third rabbit into an existing bonding pair like I'm doing with Roland into the Littles. Littles have been bonded for several years. So bringing Roland into their their partnership um, is a situation where I want to introduce Roland with Bandit and Roland with Lila separately. So I want to always work, be working on two rabbits at a time, not three. Now, sometimes people can bring a third rabbit into an existing bond, work with them for a couple weeks, and it's just fine. As long as they're not, the third rabbit is not brought into their primary enclosure too soon or right out of the gate. That, that would cause a fight that again, will probably cost you a high vet bill and suffering for the rabbits. And it might prevent any chance of future bonding too, if you do that. So uh, they say rabbits are comparative to elephants. They remember everything. They have very good memories, especially for bad fights. So just, I can't stress that enough. Don't let a bad fight occur. One, one mistake that I see bonders make, and I made early on before I did a lot of bonding, was separating them every t- single time they showed any dominant behavior like humping that that is um or or nipping each other or just one rabbit chasing the other one away trying to get it away from him or her and you have to kind of let them work some things out as long as they're not going into an all out fight where there's biting or they start looking like they're going to get into that rabbit tornado where they're circling and circling and there's fur flying and pretty soon you have blood and you have to go take the rabbits in for stitches. As long as that doesn't happen, let them work some of these things out. Out in nature, rabbits are worn animals. That means there's a group of rabbits that live together and they have an established hierarchy. Someone's in charge, someone's an alpha rabbit, and it goes from there. And they establish that themselves. And so just because your rabbit is domesticated, don't forget his or her base nature is still intact. We observe that same kind of hierarchy in warrants of rabbits or groups of rabbits that live indoors with us and are domesticated as pets. And so let them work those things out. What you want, what you're working on with bonding once you get them in the same space together is avoiding fights. Don't let them get into a fight. Don't let them bite each other. Nipping and and chasing away and lunging, that's something different as long as it doesn't go too far. So the bonder has to have a hands-off policy, but be very, very close where they can break up any fights should one erupt. Now, one thing you'll notice when introducing rabbits, or even if you've already uh, gone past the introduction phase and you've got them in the same space together, there will be increased marking. That means pooping, even if even if the rabbits are already litter trained, and hopefully they are litter trained. Um, they might start claiming even a neutral territory. One trick I use to get them used to each other quicker is to put one rabbit's droppings, that is their little round pellets, their poops, in the other rabbit's litter box. And I do this, I put, uh, I cross, so so if one, say Roland has droppings, I put, I would put those droppings in the little's litter box. And when Bandit and Lila have droppings outside the litter box, I take those droppings and I put them in Roland's litter box and I leave it like that every single time we have bonding sessions I do it that way that not only gets them used to each other's scent but when they go back into their primary living space or their primary enclosure they have the uh, dropping scent of the other rabbit and I have noticed when I use this technique that the droppings get less and less the more the rabbits share the same introduction or introductory space together another thing I'll also do if it's going into a particularly long period of time, even even actually even past a couple days, I will switch the primary living spaces. So I'll put Lila, for example, in Roland's primary living space for a couple days, and I'll put Roland in Lila and Bandit's living space for a couple days. And what that does is that mixes up their sense. It gets them used to each other and it does it, lets them be in each other's primary space without any threat of an argument or fight breaking out, which again, rabbits are so territorial that they will fight and fight and fight to defend their territory. So that's one trick I use. Just to keep in mind, kits, of course, are a lot easier to bond up until they go into their period of time where they can get pregnant, their adolescent period where they start spraying and doing those behaviors. Bonded kits usually naturally do well together. So baby baby rabbits, in other words, are very easy to get together. They do need to be separated before they can get each other pregnant if you have a bond a doe and a buck that are both babies. 
Um, Another thing to remember is if you're going to pick up a rabbit to bring home, it is a good idea to take your existing rabbit with you because they, you can get, they can bond even in the same car enclosure on the way home. Some people refer to that as stress bonding, but the truth is rabbits have to ride in cars to go to veterinary's office to go pick them up. Here when I do bonding or rehabilitation or after surgery care or bunny sitting, I use my vehicle to get the rabbits from one place to another. And so if you're going to pick up a partner from somewhere else, take your other rabbit with you and let them share a car ride home. That will greatly accelerate the bonding process, especially if introductions have already been made. Just to recap, keep in mind it bonding process, you can go straight down a bonding process, do introductions, might be love at first sight, you've got them in the same enclosure within a couple days, no problem, that does happen. It can be a little harder, you know, that might take a week or two and you can, uh, or a month and you can have them in the same enclosure. It just depends. Every situation is, not every situation is different, but there's just so many variables when it comes to pet rabbits and putting them together. They're, it depends on their sexes, how old they are, what their past is, their health. Like I said before, whether or not they've had an abusive past, if they're rescues, that sort of thing. A lot of different variables in it. The bonding process, how long it will take, just depends on those things. Number two, you have to make the commitment and see it through. That means sitting down with them, uh, in many cases staying in the area. When you finally do get them in the same space together during bonding sessions, be very close by with something to separate them. Don't let them get into fights where they can injure each other or bite one another. You know, it, a lot of bonding advice varies on things like that. Some people believe you should let them go up to the point where they actually draw blood or chasing each other as long as one doesn't bite the other. I disagree with that because when rabbits, one starts chasing, actually in pursuit, chasing one another, the next thing is the front rabbit is going to get tired of that, turn around, and then they're going to be in a tornado fight. And then you do have problems. Those are hard to separate without the human getting harmed as well. But the rabbits can also get hurt within a matter of seconds when that happens. So I'm, I'm more in favor of, I realize there's a lot of bonding experts out there. People have different techniques. I've had 100% success bonding rabbits, every single pair and trios, just using this, these gentle techniques. It's less stress on the rabbits. There's no danger of them getting harmed. And uh, we keep the bad memories at a minimum. You're trying to create positive memories, positive interactions every time the rabbits get together. Give one a treat and the other a treat while they're sitting near each other. That's a positive thing for them and they're gonna associate that with being near their future partner. Give them head rubs while they're near each other. Maybe put some hay down in front of them in a pile and hide pellets in it so that they have an activity to do together even if they're not fully bonded. Keep them in a neutral space, always. It's just so important. We've been talking a little bit about territory and how they will fight for territory. Make sure bonding sessions occur in a neutral space, even if you put one rabbit in the other one's space and switch it up all the time so that they can make sense. Those rabbits that you've had for a while before the other rabbit came along, they know where, where home is to them. They, they know the territory they believe to be theirs. So don't ever use that for a bonding space and just feel your way through it, commit to the process, put safety first, safety of the animals, and, and your safety, of course, don't get yourself bit. Now, a human can be bitten during a bonding process, but the rabbit is usually not being aggressive toward the human. When humans get, get bitten during the process of bonding, it's usually because they were trying to separate a fight and their hand got in the way of the nipping rabbit or the biting rabbit. The, the rabbit, in other words, the rabbit intended to bite the other rabbit, not, not the human. So be careful of that. Put the rabbits together when you feel comfortable that they're not going to break out in a fight and uh, pet both of their heads together. That is something that gives them pleasure and the purpose of putting them side by side when you do pet their heads, do this head petting, is that they're associating that pleasure with being near the rabbit you're trying to bond them with. And so that's a, a trick that I use over and over and over and over. I will also do that through pet fencing when one is on one side of the gate or fence and the other rabbit is on the other side. And I'll just sit on one side of the gate and pet, put my hand through the little gate opening and pet the rabbit on the other side of the gate on the head and pet pet the rabbit on my side of the gate on the head so that their heads stay near each other. And again, rabbits, they respond very well to associations. And so they're so they learn to associate pleasure with being near the rabbit you're trying to bond them with. Another way to, is as long as you have a lined bathtub where your rabbit's furry paws can't slip around, meaning they have something to grip on that slippery surface, a bathtub is a good place to do 
advanced bonding sessions past the introduction phase. I wouldn't introduce a rabbit in a bathtub just because, unless it's a love at first sight situation, but just because there's nothing between them. And if they do get into a fight, it literally takes seconds before you have a what could be a very serious wound. Also, there are videos that exist that suggest using tabletops. And I, I'm one of those people that says, don't do that. Uh, rabbits are ground animals. They, they are feel safest with all paws on the floor. This is a stressful process for them anyway. And also you don't want them lunging off or trying to get away from a rabbit and winding up on the floor with a broken spine, broken legs. Not only could that be a high vet bill for you, but you might have to wind up putting your rabbit down just because you did not do this on the floor with them. If you haven't done bonding before, you're new to bonding, or you have a, you think you have a rabbit that might be a difficult bond or in the very difficult bond category, either consult with an expert bonder or do a lot of research because this is, as I've said before, this is one area that can go very, very well for you or quickly go very wrong. Check back on this YouTube channel for more best care practices for your pet rabbits. As always, be kind to animals and thank you for caring.